no one uh, or anyone associated with the report, no one has said racism doesn't exist. I know it does. I've experienced racism. But systemic racism and uh, sort of institutional racism are quite different things. So I think um, through the UK, there is sort of cases of racism. But that doesn't mean that we are systemically racist as a country. And I think it's very, very important to divide these two things. And I, I think at the moment, they'll be amalgamated together. And I do understand that people have sort of very terrible experiences. We talk about hate crimes and things like that. These things are going on. But that doesn't mean that uh, the UK is systemically racist. Some say that this report actually shuts down the conversation of racism. Let's cast our minds back to earlier this month. We all saw the Harry, Meghan, the big television interview. They spoke of their own first-hand experience of racism in the British royal family and, indeed, the British tabloid press. I mean, it does feel that this, this conversation has only just started. Surely it shouldn't be shut down. Oh, no, no. And the, the reason we've, the, where we've issued this report is to get the conversation started. And, and um, racism is quite nuanced. Um, if you look at the experiences of different ethnic minorities, there are some positive stories and there are some very, very negative stories. And so looking at the positive stories, it means that we have come a long way. Uh, my father came to the UK uh, from Nigeria in the 1960s. And um, the situation then was, I, I would say, potentially systemically racist. But we've come a long way from there. And the thing is, if we just say, oh, no, we're still living in those times, we aren't moving on and we're not tackling the problems that we're experiencing today. Can you understand, though, why people have reservations over whether this report, uh, the people behind this report, are objective themselves? The appointment, for example, of Dr Tony Saul, Manira Mirza, they've re uh, previously questioned the existence, haven't they, of institutional racism. I mean, there is a, a sense that they might have made their minds up before this report was even written. So um, there uh, were 10 sort of uh, members of the committee, um, uh, myself being one of them, and we each came with different viewpoints. But what we were led by was the evidence. And with system, um, systemic racism, with uh, institutional racism, you can actually sort of measure whether this is happening. And as I say, in the past, we saw areas where this has happened. But in today's society, there are um, sort of areas where racism is occurring. But to say institutional racism, that is a very, very big, um, a, a, a big sort of a, a stick to wave. Uh, and, uh, institutional racism might be out there, but what we encountered, and we are limited in what we've done, we have not encountered um, institutional racism um, through this report. Uh, but um, I don't think... I, must admit, I probably came um, to uh, this with preconceived ideas, probably thinking perhaps there was institutional racism, but by looking at the data, uh, it's changed my mind. OK, and looking at the data, of course, you, you've made 24 recommendations to the government. I mean, what are the ones that are most important to you, then? Well, I think starting from the top, and um, we have sort of um, sort of um, uh, sort of um, recommendations that are sort of are in each of the sort of the different categories. But one of the um, overarching recommendations is to get rid of the use of the term "bame." Uh, BAME is sort of a quite uh, an emotive term anyway. Effectively, it's saying non-white. and But also it, it encompasses a, a very wide range of communities and they're all sort of a smooshed together into sort of a one, uh, sort of a one body. And that just doesn't work. It, as we look at the data, we see that sort of uh, some um, ethnic communities are doing uh, very well. Some uh, ethnic communities need more support. And so by smishing everybody together in, under one term, that's where we sort of get um, this sort of a, uh, we, we don't get the sort of the nuanced approach uh, to, to solving the problem. Just want to draw on your own experience as well, because of course you grew up in London, uh, you've had huge successes in a field historically dominated, let's face it, by white men. I mean, what would you say to black black women who are making their own way in the world. Yeah. So one of the things I think this report does is it does show areas of success. One of the challenges with the pessimistic story that oh, racism is sort of, it's overthrowing all of us is that people feel there's no, there's no point in trying. But I, um, through this report, we've seen that there are areas of success, women are succeeding. And although uh, in the past there has been sort of many barriers, the barriers still exist, but they're getting less. And the more we work together, the more we can do to break those barriers. So I think, you know, sort of take heart and you know, we can do it. Good to have your take on things. Thank you very much, Dr Maggie Adairin-Pocock. Thank you.